AOC is looking for her opportunity and she's playing the game, if you will. But I will tell you, things could have been a hell of a lot different today than they are right now. When Bernie Sanders went on Joe Rogan back in 2020, at the time, it was incredible because it got over 10 million views. And the Democratic establishment was literally losing their mind. Ultimately, Bernie made the wrong choice, but it's amazing how things can change. And I'm going to show you guys how it changed. This is Bernie on Joe Rogan back in 2020. Is the idea that health care is a human right, not a privilege, a radical idea? I don't think it is. It's not. And the truth is, we are the only major country on earth. Many people don't know this. We're the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. And yet we end up spending almost twice as much per capita on health care. The function, and you can argue with me if you want, but the function of the current health care system is not to provide quality care to all. It is to make tens of billions of dollars in profit for the drug companies and the insurance companies. That's the function. Uh, all that I want to do over a four-year period is to expand it. Today, eligibility ages 65. I want to take it down to 55, 45, 35, everybody over a four-year period. That's about it. And I want to expand benefits to include uh, dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses uh, as well. That's about it. Not too radical. I heard a little. He's absolutely right. And Adam, health care is a right in every developed country in the world. You can stop with the libertarian talking point of the whole Hippocratic Oath bullshit that Rand Paul once put out there. Keep in mind, Rand Paul, who I do like, his father is Ron Paul, a very successful politician. And, Ron, and Rand Paul is a doctor. Uh, but that bullshit about Hippocratic Oath nonsense doesn't fly. It's all bullshit. The only thing that would happen with a single payer healthcare system is we would still have a free market for doctors to make as much money as they're capable of making based on the merits of their abilities. You would simply be removing the for profit middlemen in between us and our doctors, and the facilitation of funds would go directly through the government. The government wouldn't run healthcare, they would be funding healthcare. You're good enough to make a million dollars a year? By all means. Aetna, Cigna, Pfizer, United, they don't need to exist. They offer nothing. They are the welfare queens of society. They need to go. And single payer is how we do it. is exactly the same thing as in every other aspect of our lives. It's the power of money. All right, listen to this. Over the last 20 years, the drug companies alone have spent four and a half billion dollars in 20 years on lobbying and campaign contributions. That's what we're up against. The knowledge, and I mark my words, Within a short period of time, you will see TV ads in California, all over this country, demonizing Bernie Sanders. He wants to do this terrible thing to you. He wants to do that. They have unbelievable amounts of money, uh, and politicians are frightened of that power. I'll give you one example. Uh, back in 2016, I got involved here in a little way with an effort on the part of the nurses to control uh, the cost of prescription drugs in California. You may recall that effort. I do. It was a ballot item in one state here in California. Do you know how much the drug companies alone spent to defeat that effort? They spent $131 million on one ballot item in one state. This is what we're up against. And this was not talked about, not even for a second, by the Donald when I came on. Did he talk about anything related to things like this? Of course not. This is the one guy who really got it. And he had to be put down like a rabid dog. All right. Last year, the top 10 drug companies made $69 billion. A week ago, I went to Canada with a number of Americans 
who are dealing with diabetes. We bought insulin in Windsor, Ontario for one-tenth the price, 10% of the price, same exact product being charged in America. So you got drug companies that are engaged in collusion and in price fixing who are incredibly greedy and the result is many elderly people, many working people simply cannot afford the medicine they need. This is, it's unbelievable. Today in America, you got three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of the American society. You don't see that on television too much, do you? No, you don't. Three people. You got the top 1% owning more wealth than the bottom 92%. Listen to this. This is a statistic we recently saw. It came from the Federal Reserve. Over the last... 30 years, the top 1% has seen a $21 trillion increase in their wealth. The bottom half of America has seen a $900 billion decline in their wealth. So what you have in America today is a relatively small number of incredibly wealthy people. And I deal with these guys every day. People say, oh, we're talking about rich. You don't know what rich is, what multi-billion dollar operations are. And that is something that Bernie is 1,000% correct about. People do not cannot and are not able to fully wrap their heads around what this type of wealth and power is all about. They don't. You have people today that are richer than cities, major cities. What they're worth, got people that are worth more than that. That's, that's beyond insane power. That's global changing level power. That's crazy. And that should scare everybody. And Bernie's been talking about this for a long time. Unfortunately, he wasn't willing to fight the way that he needed to. But we'll, we'll continue. Incredible power over our society. And if you were the pharmaceutical industry, and last year 10 companies made $69 billion in profit, you're sitting around right now saying, all right, that's great. How do we do better next year? What strategy do we have? We're going to put a lot of ads on. We're going to work with other – during the CNN debate that I participated in recently, in the debate, right in the middle of the debate, the drug companies and the insurance companies had an ad telling how bad so-called – how bad Medicare for all would be. So they, they're smart guys, and they use their power over politicians. They use their power over the media. They spend billions of dollars on advertising on media to make sure that they make as much as they can in profit. You know, they will tell you this, all of their money on research and development. We're, trying, we're tackling cancer. We're tackling diabetes, Alzheimer's. The truth is, of course they are. But the bulk of their money is going off into what we call Me Too drugs. They make modest changes in a drug, which really doesn't improve people's well-being in order to make profits. So the answer is yes. We need, obviously, vigorous research and development. And by the way, your tax dollars, all of our tax dollars, often goes to that research, and we don't get the benefit of it in terms of lower prices. Now, Bernie, unfortunately, does not have the dynamic personality that Trump does. When Bernie went on with Rogan, he went on for just over an hour. Trump went on for three hours. And of course, he talked about a lot of things that were not politically related. And that's something a lot of people like. Bernie can and was never really able to get out of that mindset. But his messaging was spot on. And Rogan said, I support Bernie. I'd like for him to be president. And when over 10 million of your listeners listen and hear that, that's going to have an impact, especially because it happened on the eve of the primaries. That's a big deal. And they couldn't have that. So they had, a, they had to squash him. They had to squash Bernie. And you know who squashed Bernie possibly the hardest? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh, Colin, what is this? Please, please give me the stuff that I gave you uh, that I forwarded you earlier for uh, AOC. I want to show you guys. It, it's there. You, you forwarded me a lot. <laughs> that was one of them. I didn't realize you're all attached to one. This one right here. OK. No, this is not it either. Uh, I sent you an article earlier regarding AOC. Oh, okay. It's here. AOC backed away. That's it. So, right after the Rogan interview, everybody came down very hard on Bernie and told Bernie to reject Joe Rogan's endorsement because Joe Rogan said some bad things 
So he must be rejected. It's like pulling teeth. AOC backed away from Sanders' campaign after Joe Rogan endorsement. This is from March of 2020. Scroll down, please. Representative AOC declined multiple pleas from the Bernie Sanders campaign to stump for the Vermont senator's candidacy after the Iowa caucuses, according to HuffPo. Ocasio-Cortez was heavily involved in the campaign's buildup to Iowa, headlining seven rallies for Sanders in Iowa over the weekend on January 24th to January 26th. But the progressive New York representative disagreed with the campaign over its decision to promote the endorsement of Joe Rogan, the popular podcaster who has been criticized by LGBT activists for opposing puberty blockers for gender-confused children. He has also spoken out against the participation of biological males competing in women's sports. Bayi Shakar, Sanders' campaign manager, also reportedly criticized AOC for a polarizing speech in which she advocated for those in attendance to help illegal aliens to avoid ICE. She also failed to mention Sanders' name in the January 25th speech, a fact highlighted by Fox News. When the campaign attempted the same strategy of touting AOC for Sanders in New Hampshire, she refused multiple times before ultimately speaking the day before the February 12th primary at a Sanders rally. It was like pulling teeth to get her to New Hampshire. Then from February 11th to March 8th, Ocasio-Cortez rejected numerous invitations from the campaign to speak on Sanders' behalf in Nevada, South Carolina, and the 14 states that voted on Super Tuesday. She finally agreed to speak at a get out the vote rally at the University of Michigan campus in Ann Arbor on Sunday, which was an apparent last minute decision, forcing the campaign to release a revised media advisory about the rally the night before the event. Ofpo reported that neither the Sanders campaign nor the Ocasio-Cortez's campaign office denied the facts of the story. Senator Sanders and our campaign will never forget that in one of the most difficult moments for us, AOC gave us a boost with her strong endorsement. And she has remained a steady and consistent ally, supporter, surrogate, advisor to the senator, blah, blah, blah. In an interview in January, AOC bashed the Democratic Party for being too big of a tent. In any other country, Joe Biden and I would not be in the same party, but in America we are. But Sanders' campaign used the same tent language to defend the Rogan endorsement, saying in a statement that sharing a big tent requires including those who do not share every one of our beliefs, while always making clear that we will never compromise our values. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden slammed the comments, saying on January 27th that there was no room for compromise and calling transgender equality the the civil rights issue of our time. Transgender equality, the civil rights issue of our time. AOC then said in an interview released February 2nd that Democrats must rally behind the eventual nominee, no matter who it is, despite calling Biden not a pragmatic choice last June. She's been pulling our legs forever. Is she the reason that Bernie did not win the nomination? You can never put it on one person's shoulders. But there is no question. You think Tulsi's calculating? Alex is extremely calculating. She took full advantage of the movement to boost her position within the party apparatus. And she's got her eyes set on big things in the future, and especially now that the party is in shambles. There's a huge opening for her to make even bigger moves. It is what it is, baby. This is the way it's going to be. And then this happened last night. Congratulations, sir.
Congratulations. Mr. Amazing how much things have changed. I don't want anyone to forget this segment. In fact, I want you to save it. Because when anybody, and I mean anybody, brings up Alex as some type of a progressive bastion to support in the future, just remember, he'll stab you in the back and in the front. I didn't realize, and maybe at the time, it's a little difficult because in March, we were already dealing with the pandemic. At least we were down, excuse me, we we're dealing with that down here in Florida and we were also in the midst of Jen's congressional campaign, first one against Wasserman Schultz. So I didn't actually remember that much from that particular time uh, with you know, AOC doing what she did, which obviously in many ways was devastating to Bernie. The problem with the squad and AOC, as Sajik points out, they were indirectly anti-white and overly woke, which turns off most of the country. Bernie 2016 was the way. I don't agree with everything, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, the overwoke shit doesn't work. And being constantly told that you're racist, you're sexist, you're big. I mean, you can call me. I've been called everything in the book. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. But for a lot of people, it just gets under their skin to the point in which they're like, fuck it, I'll just go support Trump. And you know who decided that they were just going to say, fuck it, I'm going to go support Trump? Joe Rogan. 